episode 55 of my Doll's House Diary. Now in today's episode I'm going to be back in the landing area and I want to have a go at creating an arched window. Now I'm not too sure yet how I'm going to go about it but I'm sure I'll figure it out as we go along. So let's get started. So I've started off here with a template of the window. So I just trapped the sketch pad behind the doll's house and then Matt very kindly drew around the inside of the window for me. Now I say a template but I am just going to be using this as a sizing guide and at each stage when I've cut the wood I will actually take it to the doll's house and measure just to make sure that I've got an accurate piece before I sort of build the window and then find that it doesn't actually fit into place. I'll just pop that to one side and then my doll's house is made from nine millimeter thick plywood and that's three eighths of an inch so I've cut here some nine millimeter strips and I've actually cut these from my three millimeter one eighth of an inch abishi sheet wood now when you're cutting strips from a sheet make sure you've got a nice sharp blade in your knife and a nice sharp pencil nib. And then after I've made my first cut, I like to line up the piece of sheet wood on my cutted mat, just to make sure that it's straight. When you're cutting sort of several strips from a sheet, you can go off track very quickly. So if you sort of cut one piece nine and a quarter millimeters, and then you keep doing that and keep doing it, you'll find that your strips become wonky so you won't have a nice straight strip. So I'll probably need a few more than this but this will sort of give me a start. And how I'm actually planning on doing it is building the square part of the window first or the oblong part of the window and then we'll work on the arched piece. So it will be sort of in two separate pieces or I'll build it in two separate pieces and then we'll join the arched piece in at the end. And I'm actually just thinking of creating the strips for the arch and then they will sit directly into the cutout. So I won't be doing anything to sort of make an arched piece of wood to go around on the inside. And that's my plan anyway, so we'll have to see how it goes. So let's get started. So I've drawn out here a rough design for my window. And as you can see, I'm leaving a larger pane in the centre there just to make it a little bit different. And I've done it like this as it's very similar to the door that I designed for the dining room that comes out on the right hand side of the doll's house with that sort of longer central panel. And again, this is the beauty of sort of building your own doors and windows is that you can design them however you like. And things like this are really easy to put together. And then if I just sort of put a line across there, so as I said earlier, I'm going to be starting with this bottom design, so this rectangle piece, which should be quite straightforward. So the only difficulty will be in sort of measuring up the pieces exactly as I go along. And then I shall tackle this sort of arched piece and I shall actually cut a piece of wood from three millimeter sheet wood and shape it into that um, sort of arched piece there. And then these will just be strips coming out of it. And we'll have to make three of those identical to again obviously get our nine millimetre depth. But let's make a start with the rectangle section. So just looking at the bottom of my template here or my outline, this side just goes in a little bit. So I've just gone and had a look at the actual window and that is actually a bit of congealed paint in the corner there. So I just use my metal needle file and I've sanded in both corners of the window. And you want to make sure you do that if it sort of previously had paint on it, just to make sure that you're starting with a nice square frame, otherwise your entire frame will look off. Okay, so now I can cut my first piece. Okay, so I've just measured across my template there, sort of squaring that piece off, and then made a pencil mark on my first piece of strips. So I'm now going to cut this. And then I'm going to go and try this into place. Okay, so that first piece is actually a really nice fit in there. So not too tight. You don't want it too tight so that you're not going to be able to actually get the window in when you've built it. But a nice fit. 
I then cut a second piece to the same size. Let me just move the camera up a little bit. And I want the square part of the window to come to about here. Maybe a little bit higher up. So this piece now that I cut the same size as the one below is too wide. So I'll take a little bit off there. And just looking at it now, I can see that the archway isn't even, so it's more rounded this side. And then there's a bit of a square bit there. But I don't want to go that high up, so I probably will come to about here. And then I can just measure down from this strip to the bottom strip, and that will be my two sides. And then I know that that's going to fit in there squarely. So let me just go and take a little bit off of this piece. So that now fits in there nicely as well, and I only took about a millimetre off there, but always just take a tiny bit, try it again, and then take a bit more if you need to. And then I just sort of want to measure from that bottom strip up to the bottom of that one. So that's about 113, but I think I'll make it 115, just to keep it a nice sort of rounded measurement. So I'll now cut two side pieces to 115, and then there's my bottom square piece. Okay, so there's my basic square frame, and now I know that that fits into the opening. I don't have to keep measuring for my other bits that I now put in to make up the patterned frame. So if I look again at my plan, I've now got these two pieces that run down the centre. So I'm going to do those long, and then I can cut all of these other little pieces separately. So I've got here two long pieces, 115 millimetres again, the same as the outside, because my top and bottom frames are sort of enclosing the outsides, so I know they're all going to be the same length. And then I want to work out the thirds. So what have I got? So I've got 97 and then I deduct the width of these four pieces so that's 12 so that leaves me 85 divided by 3 so what's that is that 27 so that'd be 60 that would be 81 so 28 would be 84 so it doesn't divide equally so what I'm going to do is have the two outside openings the same and then I'll just have that little bit of extra width in that central one. So my two outer widths will be 28 and I'll have 29 millimetres in the centre. So I'll come back to my plan. So on these outer edges I need six of those shorter pieces. So I need six pieces measuring 28 millimetres and then two for the centre there measuring 29 millimetres. So I'll cut those now. Okay, so that's the outer pane divides cut. And then if I measure in the centre, I've actually got less width there than I did on the outside. And when I've remeasured my sheet wood here that I sort of counted as three millimetres is actually 3.5. And on one piece, it was almost four. So that has then affected the width of that central opening. But it's okay, so they now work out at just under 27 millimetres rather than the 29 that I'd sort of planned for. But when you're doing something that has three sections and you have a difference so that your, you know, it doesn't, your measurement doesn't divide exactly by three, always have the difference in the centre. So in my case, it's worked out narrower than I thought it would be, but it's okay because it's in the centre, so it's going to look intentional. Okay, so I've cut those pieces as well. And they'll go there and there, so I've got that longer panel in the centre, and I really like how that looks. So what I'm actually going to do now is sand all of these pieces on the surface and along the cut edges, and then glue this section together. I can then try that into place and make any adjustments if I need to. Then I've got an exact 
measurement for my arched pieces. So I've sanded along the edges of each of my pieces and I've laid them back in order. Although I have just written a B on this bottom piece and I think that was the sort of only piece that had to be placed in a particular position as the bottom piece is just slightly wider than that top piece. So if you're sort of all symmetrical and it doesn't matter where they go back then you don't have to worry about putting them back into position but if you do have one or two pieces that need to go in a particular place then make sure you remember where they go. And I'm now going to use my 240 grade sandpaper to sand the surface of each piece. And this will just then prepare the pieces for a really nice coat of paint. Once you've sanded your pieces, remove the sanding dust with a soft brush. So before I glue my frame together, I just want to make some pencil marks on the outer frames and the two inner frames for placement of these sort of shorter pane divides. So if I just take the first side, and I know I want one of them to be positioned in the centre, so if I just make a pencil mark in the centre there, and I'm making it on the narrower edge there, which will be upwards when I'm sort of gluing my frame together. And then I want a pencil mark in the centre of that section as well. And then that will be 28 and a quarter. So then I'll just do the little pencil line closer to the 28. And then 28 and a quarter from that top edge. And that one will go there. So that will be my three pencil marks and then I can transfer those onto the other three divides. So I'm going to construct the frame working from left to right and then I don't have to do pencil marks on the top and bottom supports because the sort of smaller panes will decide where that next long divide goes if you see what I mean. So Let's make a start. I'm also using the lines on my cutting mat to help me keep everything lined up as I go along. And remember the longer ones are on the inside edge of the top and bottom pieces, if you've done it that way of course. I'm just sort of lining those up and pressing them together. And I'm just moving that down now so I've got a line there for my next smaller divide. And that's one of the longer ones. So I've got the two shorter ones in the centre there. So try and keep your pieces in some sort of order. So you don't have to keep sort of measuring as you go along. And I want that piece sitting centrally across that pencil line. I'm using that line there to make sure that that's sitting straight. And then of course I've got a line on my next divide so I'll line it up that way as well. But it's just really to keep everything square. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on each end of those. And then I can come in with my next long divide. It's all sort of still quite fragile at this stage, so just be really careful with it. I'll put a bit at the top of here as well. So I'm just lining those up now with that line down there, and that will then help me keep this piece straight, like that. Make sure your top piece is running along a line as well, so you don't pull it down too far. I think I've done there so I'll just line that up again and then just give it all a gentle press. These are all lining up nicely as well so the little pencil line is in the centre of each one. It's difficult at this stage to sort of get in and give it all a good firm press but just sort of press where you can, <laughs> press and hold. And I'm actually going to let that first section dry off for a moment before I then carry on along. So that's the central section done as well and that's been drying off for a couple of minutes too. So I'm now going to begin on this final sort of panel. Final one as 
one. So again, I'll just let those pieces dry off just for 30 seconds or so. Okay, so I'm gluing the final bottom piece into place now. And it's sturdy enough now that I can actually pick it up to apply the glue, which is good. Makes it a lot easier. Goes that way round. And press that into place. It's now sort of sturdy enough that you can give it a good firm press. So I'm going to press and hold for a moment, then I'll leave this piece to dry. And it's approaching lunchtime now, so I'll make a start on something else and then come back to this after lunch. And then I should be ready to dry fit it actually into the window opening. This has been drying for a good couple of hours now and is nice and solid. So I'm going to sand it on both sides. So I'm going to hold it against the sandpaper and just go around in small circular motions. I'm going to do that on both sides of the piece. So I've also gone along each straight edge just in the one direction across my sandpaper just to make sure I've got those nice flush edges everywhere. And if you've got any of your little pencil lines left then you can go in with a smaller piece of sandpaper or even an eraser and just get rid of those otherwise they'll show through your paint. But now for the moment of truth. So let's go and try this into place. So that's actually a really nice fit. So a little tighter at the top than it is at the bottom. But I'm just happy that it fits in there and it's holding itself in. I think that looks really nice. So what I want to do now is start work on the arch. And I'm just going to begin by making that little arched piece to go there. So let's go back into the craft room and we'll do that next. So I want my arched piece to go from there to there and line up with these two pane divides. So I've measured from the outer edge of each of those and that's 33 millimetres. So that's the diameter I want my circle to be. So I've got here a piece of three millimetre sheet wood one eighth of an inch and I'm going to cut two circles from it each measuring 33 millimetres and then I need to use three halves to make my piece to attach to the window frame and that's then three millimetres times three is nine millimetres which is the thickness of my frame so we'll just stick the three together and that will then stick at the top there and that's the plan anyway <laughs> so let's start by drawing the circles I've got my compass here so set it to half of the size that you want your circle. So just line that up on your ruler there. So I set that up there to 16 and a half. And then I want to draw two circles. Okay, so I'm just going to start by cutting that in half and then I can just work on one circle at a time. Like so. so I'll pop that one there and then I want to cut this one out. So as usual when I'm shaping wood I always begin with my scribe tool which is rather like a pen with a nice sharp pointed tip and I just go around the edge of the drawn line just with these sort of small sweeps of the nib. So I'm not trying to cut it out or anything here. We're just making a little score in the wood. And then I always find that that helps to keep the blade of the knife on track. So it makes it easier to cut out and more accurately. Now you might have machine tools or a laser cut or something like that that would make this job obviously a lot easier. But I don't have those, so I like to do everything by hand. And if 
feel the same and this is a good way of doing it. Okay, so I've been all the way around the edge there and now I'm going to come in with my craft knife. So I'm going to start again just by going around the edge of that circle with the tip of the knife blade. Again, not trying to cut it out at this stage, but just making that line a little bit deeper. And just be really careful of your fingers when you're doing something like this. Just always be aware of where they are in relation to the blade. Okay, so I've been around at least once there. So I'm now going to start cutting away the outer sheet wood. So I'm going to sort of make scores in the wood there. And it's just easier to cut it away section by section. Just make sure that I'm keeping the edge of that circle in there. And take those out one bit at a time. some more scores in around the circle and then just work my way around just removing one section at a time and I'm just using the very tip of the knife to cut through and make sure you're completely through before you then try and pull the section away or you might split part of the wood that you want to keep. Like that. And don't worry about any rough edges because we'll tidy all of those up afterwards with some sandpaper. So just work your way around, taking your time. And just remove one section at a time. Once you've cut out the circle, just go around the cut edge with a piece of 240 sandpaper. I then want to cut the circle in half, so I'm just going to draw a pencil line across that central mark there and then turn it and do it that way as well. And then I'm going to cut across against the grain. And I'm just thinking that will make it easier when I then come to cut out the inner circle. But we'll, we'll find out shortly. <laughs> Okay, so there's my half circle and I now want to sort of freehand the bit that I want to cut out from the inside to make that narrow arch. So as my paint divides are 3.5 millimetres, I'm actually going to make this 3.5 millimetres thick rather than the three. So I'm just going to start by coming down the centre there and doing a little mark 3.5 from the outer edge and then work my way around like that and then I can actually join that line up and that then becomes my cut line like that okay so again I'm going to begin with my scribe tool and just score that line into the wood now I must admit I have just had a practice and the arch ended up breaking just because you're sort of cutting a larger section away and leaving quite a fine section there it is likely to break and again I probably shouldn't have done it so it was in the direction of the grain I should have done it against it and that might have might have made it a little bit stronger but I'm going to persevere and because I'm sort of 
layer in this I'm going to have three pieces glued together if they do break I'm just going to glue them back together and that's what I did with my practice piece which is sort of dry into one side at the moment but like I say because I'm going to have the three pieces that will add the strength so I'm just going to be extra careful cutting it out and just hope that this piece doesn't break as well Okay, so again, coming in with the knife, I'm just going to score around that cut line again. And on my sort of practice piece, I did cut sections in this bottom area, but I'm wondering whether to do that. I'm wondering if that does actually weaken it and whether I should just keep sort of cutting round. So because I've got three of these to do, I'll try it that way with this one. So I'm not going to score my lines as I usually do and remove section by section. I'm thinking that, that may weaken it. I'm just going to sort of keep going around until I've cut all the way through. And see if that's better. So I thought I was doing quite well there, but it has just actually split along that part of the wood there. So I'm going to keep going, just being really careful. And then I'll just have to end up gluing that piece back on. I know it's going to come off, but I'm just sort of holding on to it for now. <laughs> it's come off, I think. Yeah, so I'll take that piece off and then I can just glue that straight back on once I've cut the rest of it out. And it's a shame, but it's not going to be noticeable once I've sanded and filled if necessary and then painted the piece. Okay, so I had a couple of breaks in that piece, which I've glued, and because it's along a sort of grain line, they actually glue back together quite nicely, so that's not going to be too noticeable. Now, I'm not going to do any sanding or tidying up until I've glued the three pieces together, and that way, not only will they be even, but it will be a stronger piece to work on as well, so I'm not likely then to crack it again as I'm sanding. So I'm just going to pop that to one side as well, and now do my third and final piece, which I've got ready here. Okay, so there's the three pieces there. Again, had a little crack in the last one as well, or split. But I'm now going to actually glue these three together. I do look a little bit rough at the moment, I'll admit, but once I've sanded, like I say, as one piece, we'll get these looking really nice and neat. My piece on as well. Okay, so there's my arched piece. Now, I think if I were to clamp that, that's just going to pull it all apart anyway, just because it's so delicate. So I'm not going to, but I am going to leave it drying overnight, just so that I can come back to it tomorrow and it's going to be a nice solid piece for me to work on. So I'm just sort of straightening it up as much as I can now. I think I should probably leave it because the more I'm sort of pushing it around, the more it's sort of moving out of place. But I was just going to show you how that is going to look in situ. Don't want to sort of accidentally glue it into place. <laughs> Let me just lift you up. So that will sit on there. And then we'll have probably three, I'm thinking, extra sort of strips coming out like that, like a sort of sunrise, which will fit into that arch of the cutout. So pretty happy with that really. Okay, so I'm gonna move that away so that doesn't sort of stick into place. So it's the next day now, and this piece is completely dry and feels a lot sturdier. So I'm now going to give it a sand, but I'm going to support it as much as I can between my fingers as I sand. And I'm using a 240 grade sandpaper, which is about a medium grade, I suppose but I'm not going too harshly with it. So 
So I'm just getting around the inside edge there. I've just sort of wrapped the sandpaper around my finger. And again, just going really gently. That is actually smoothing out quite nicely. Okay, so I'm now going to glue this piece into place. And I may still do a little bit of filling on it just to get rid of some of the grooves that are still visible. But I'll do that before I add the first coat of paint. So I just want to glue that up there. And I just went and checked which way around the frame goes. And this is the side that faces into the room or into the landing area. So just press and hold for a moment. OK, so what I want to do now is go and pop this back into place and then I can get exact measurements for the arched pane divides. OK, so the window's now back in place and I just wanted to take a few measurements. So first of all, the central divide will go straight up there and I make that just over 37 millimetres. So that should work out at 37 then to each side or if I cut them to that length and then position them to the two sides that they should then be even so they should sort of start and finish in the same place well that's the plan anyway so I'll go and cut those strips and then I'll just come back and dry fit them okay so that's those top pieces there just balanced into place so I'm just dry fitting it there and the first time I did it the whole lot just went right down the back of the doll's house and as it's on such a heavy unit as well I had to get down there with the feather duster and pull all of that out it's a little bit dusty now as well but I'm happy with the fit of those but what I'm going to do rather than attach those three pieces of strip at the top there is paint it all separately and then when I come to fit it I'll glue them into place and I think that will be the best way of doing it. Okay so let me get these all back into the craft room and I'll apply a coat of paint. So I'm going to be using my natural calico emulsion again and I've got my glove on and I'll just do these pieces in my hand because obviously I want to do both sides as the window is going to be seen from the back of the doll's house as well. But I would say when you're sort of doing frames, just try and be methodical so that you get, you know, inside all of the frames, because I've done it before where I thought I was finished, put my paint away, and then you come back and you find that actually you haven't done one of the inside edges. So just sort of try and go round in a particular order if you can. And I'll probably do a couple of coats on here. And then sand after each coat just to smooth that off. Okay, so that's one coat on each of those pieces. And just to say with your window frame, you don't need to come around these outside edges that are going to be sort of enclosed in the opening. But I would say before you leave it to dry, I'm going to leave this overnight now, just check in all of the corners in the panes there, just to make sure there's no paint sitting in the corner. You normally find that you get a bit of a blob in the corner. So just go around with a dry brush or close to dry brush and just go over it once just to get rid of any little blobs of paint. And then you'll have an easier job of sanding tomorrow before you do your second coat. OK, so again, I'm going to leave this overnight now and I'll see you in the morning. OK, so it's the next day now and the paint has completely dried. So I'm now using a piece of 500 grade sandpaper just to very gently sand the first coat. So I'm just applying a second coat of paint on here now and just a light coat as the first coat covered quite nicely. So the paint is now dry and I'm just going to finish that off with a piece of 500 grade sandpaper and just give a very light sand 
And I was asked recently in the comments, why do I sand after painting? And it's just really to smooth off that final coat and get rid of any brush strokes or bristle marks. And just to give it a nicer finish really. But you don't want to sand too harshly because obviously at this stage you don't want to remove any of the paint and expose the wood beneath. So you really are just giving it a very light sand. So I'm just brushing that over the surface. And it really does make a difference. You really do get a nicer paint finish. So again, remove the paint dust, just using your soft brush. And this piece is now ready to be glued into place. So I'm going to apply the glue here in my craft room and then just take that through and glue it into place. And obviously the glue just needs to go along the sides and along the bottom. Okay, so that's the main section there now glued into place. So I'm now going to go and get little pane divides and get those in as well. Okay, so that's the top divides in as well. And I just positioned those by eye. I think I've got them pretty spot on there. But it was just a case of sort of jiggling them around a little bit so that the bottom edge is matched. And then the outer edges look even because the archway isn't exactly central. So I've got sort of more rounded arch on one side than the other. But I think that looks pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. So I'm going to let that dry off for a moment and then I want to make an internal surround. So I'm now working on the surround for the window frame. So I'm going to be using my 1.5mm sheet wood, 1 16th of an inch, and I've made the depth 7mm. So I want to have it so it overlaps the first part of the frame or the inside of the internal frame. And I'm using again my sort of template as a guide. So that will sit along there. So 3.5 millimeters up, which is the thickness of the strip that I've used. And then the side pieces will come along there. And I've cut those so they just reach up to the sort of rounded part or where it starts to round off up there and obviously to the top of the frame and that will go there so i've just gone and tried these into place in the doll's house and that's a really nice fit so i took a measurement from the top of this frame to the top of the arch and that's 56 and a half millimeters and then across including the overlaps is 102 millimeters so if I now cut a piece of wood to that size and then create the arch with a 7mm thickness, that should then sit nicely up there and again just overlap a little bit of the window. So obviously we haven't got the frame up there because I stuck the pane divides directly to the inside of the opening. But we'll still have a little bit of an overhang just so it looks the same as the rest. So I'm now going to cut the arch. So I've cut around the arch on my template and I just went and tried that into place and that's a really nice fit on the inside edge of the window. So I've positioned it here on my piece of sheet wood. So the outside edge needs to be this 3.5 millimeters at either side. So I now just need to copy that around with my pencil to the shape of the template. And I'm just gonna do that by eye. like that and each side of the arch was slightly different so that arch is down more and that's sort of straight from about there. So I've obviously copied that then onto that and then I need to move this down so I have a seven millimeter thick piece then left and obviously that needs to be even. So I'm just going to lay the first side surround into place there so I know I need to come up like that and then from that side, the same again. Now that goes sort of straight up like that. But then for the rest of the measurements, I'm going to do a measurement in from my first line, seven millimeters, and then copy that around, and then I can cut it out. If 
final one there and then join those up. <laughs> So I'm just starting as usual with my scribe tool and just sort of etching the the line into the wood. So I've also gone around those lines with my craft knife but I'm actually going to cut out the central piece first and leave these corners intact and I think it will keep it a little bit stronger whilst I'm sort of cutting out the central section. I'm really just going to keep going around until I'm through. It's not now free, so I'll pull that out. Now I'm going to very carefully go around the outside edges. And here I can probably use some little lines and then remove that in sections. I'm just really wary of these sort of thin side pieces. Don't want those to break as I'm doing it. Actually, it's easier just doing it in one piece, I think, than doing the sections. And then the final corner. And this is where it's really annoying if it breaks at this stage, <laughs> once you've sort of come so far. So just take your time. That's the final corner there. So I'm just going to go and try this into place. Okay, so that will sit there, so just at the top of the straight part. Like that. That's not bad, it needs some tidying up. And I think I can make that sort of bit on the right hand side a little bit thinner. Because although I've shaped it obviously to the, the shape of the window, I'm hiding that. So I can just make that one a little bit thinner and more rounded. And then I think just a little bit of tidying up. And that will look good. So I'll take this back into the craft room. So I've done a little bit of trimming around that inside edge. Just to make this side a little bit narrower. I think that looks a lot nicer now and just as you're sanding just be really careful so I'm sort of sanding the inside edge by holding the sandpaper at an angle and actually sanding it flat on the surface but I am still getting to that inside edge so that's quite a good way of doing it okay so I'm now ready to give these pieces a coat of paint and as they only need painting on one side, I've attached them to my sheet here, which makes it a lot easier. So my surround pieces are now dry and I've given them a gentle sand. So I'm now going to glue these into place. And there is the window with the surround in place. I'm really pleased with it. I've got a little bit of filling to do, just where the arch meets the sort of straight edges. And then I'm going to be glazing this window using a clear acetate. But to do that, I'll need to get around the back of the doll's house. So I'll need to pull it out and pull the unit out. So I'll have to get Matt to give me a hand with that. So I won't do that today, but hopefully by the next Doll's House Diary episode, I'll have that done. And there's a little bit of the paper coming down from behind the arch at the top there. So I'm just going to let it dry and then I can trim that paper off. But otherwise, that's more or less complete now. And I just think it looks so much better in there with the window. Let me just pull back a little bit. So once I've finished all of those little jobs, I can then carry on with the skirting in this area and then get the entrance hall and landing stairs into place, which I'm really looking forward to doing. Okay, so that's it for today, and I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if you have an arched window opening that you need to fill, I hope this has really helped you. I'm really pleased that that is now done, and now I can move on to the next job. So I'll see you again in the next episode. Until then, take care. Bye.